Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about solving systems of equations and we're going to solve them using both the substitution and elimination methods. Just a reminder, an equation is usually just one equation, but a system of equations is when you have two or more equations like what you see here. That's what makes it a system. And when we're looking at these particular equations, we're going to focus on equations that are linear. So what that means is, say if you look at number one, this equation here is a linear equation which it might not completely look like it, uh, but if you move the 2x over here, it's going to be y equals negative 2x plus 20, which looks like y equals mx plus b, which would be a line. Okay, so all these equations are linear just like that. Um, just to kind of get a visual of what's going on here, when you have two of them together, it means when you're looking at a coordinate plane, we don't just have 2x plus y equals 20, which is what you see here, proving that it's linear, um, but you have another equation as well. And when you're solving a system, we're looking for what point do those two lines have in common, which you can do graphically by looking at the screen here. You can kind of point to it, the point that they both have in common, or we could solve algebraically and either method will work. But in this video, we're going to focus on how do you do that with calculations. So there are two methods that you can solve these with substitution and elimination. Remember, substitute just means to replace. So what you essentially do in substitution is you replace um, a variable with one of the equations. And in elimination, well, you're going to eliminate a variable by, you know, adding them or subtracting them. And I'll show you both here. Okay, so starting with number one, you kind of have to decide what a better method is. Do I want to substitute? Do I want to eliminate? And in order to do substitution, what you want to look for is a variable that's almost by itself, such as this y here. Right, there's no coefficient in front of it. It's almost alone. And if you can get that variable alone, then you can take the equation that's equal to it, substitute it into the second equation. Let me show you how that's done. So I actually had that variable isolated before, but I'm going to do it again for the sake of substitution. If you want to get y by itself, we need to move this to x. How do you get rid of 2x? Well, 2x minus 2x, it would be gone. Zero x as they cancel out. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So if I do that, y is by itself over here, and then you have 20 minus 2x, which is the same thing as negative 2x plus 20. Okay, so now I have y isolated by itself. Okay, so I know that y is equal to 20 minus 2x. So anywhere you see a y, this means the same thing. They're equal to each other. They're exactly the same. They're equivalent. Okay, so anywhere you see a y, you know that it's the same as 20 minus 2x. So I could take that 20 minus 2x and substitute it in for y in the second equation, the other equation. I'm going to plug that in here. And I'll do it first and I'll explain why that works. Um, but it's no longer y because we know y is 20 minus 2x. I just substitute or replace that in there. And you get an expression or an equation like this. Why does that work? Okay, when you started this problem, you had equations with two variables, an x and a y. Now we have a one variable equation. And we all know how to solve one variable equations, so that's why this helps us. Okay, you want to bring it down from a two variable to a one variable so you can solve it. And now we just use our algebra solving skills. Um, clean this up a little bit by first distributing the minus 5 there. So the 6x is going to say exactly the same. We're just going to multiply the minus 5 to the 20 and the minus 5 to the minus 2x. So minus 5 times 20 is going to be uh, negative 100. Negative 5 times negative 2x, well negative times a negative is positive. 2 times 5 is 10, so it's going to be 10x. Okay, now that you've done that, I see that there are like terms here that I can clean up and combine. I've got 6x's, I add 10x's, that gives me 16x's. Everything else is going to stay the same, just cleaning up one step at a time. Okay, now I've got to isolate x, right? The goal is to solve for x, our one variable out of our two variables that we have. So you need to move everything away from the x, starting with the 100. Okay, so if you do that, minus 100 plus 100, addition and subtraction undo each other because they're inverse operations. Okay, that would cancel out and be 0, so you'd just be left with 16x here and 112 on the other side. Okay, then we have 16 times x. How do you do how do you undo multiplication? You would divide because 16 divided by 16 is actually 1. 
and 1x is the same as just x by itself. So whatever you did to that, you need to do to the other side. So 112 divided by 16 is going to tell us that x is equal to 7. Okay, so essentially you brought the two variable equation down to one, one variable equation. You got x. Okay, half the battle, but we also need to know why. Because remember, what we're actually looking for is uh, what point do they have in common? And points come in an x and a y. You can kind of see that we, we were right about the x there, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so in order to solve for y, you're going to take this value of x and substitute it back into one of the original equations. It doesn't matter which one you pick because this point is going to be on both. I usually just pick whatever is easier. Um, I'd rather multiply 2 times 7 than 6 times 7. I don't know. So I'm going to plug it into the first one. So it was 2x uh, plus y equals 20. But now I know that x is equal to 7, right? So anywhere I see an x, I can say it's 7. So instead of 2 times x, it's now 2 times 7. And I just clean this guy up here. So 2 times 7 is 14, just one step at a time. Uh, remove the 14 from this side so you can isolate y. Okay, that gives me 0. 20 minus 14 gives me 6. The y-coordinate then is 6. Okay, which makes the solution to my system the point where x is 7, y is 6. Uh, don't forget we always write a point is x comma y. And that would tell me where those two lines intersected, what point they have in common. Which, when we open up Desmos, we can see was the answer graphically as well. So these two lines do in fact intersect at 7, 6. But that's the algebraic way to do it that we call substitution. Okay, Number two, we're going to try another one. Um, First, we want to decide if substitution is a good method for this. Okay, so remember in substitution, you want to try and isolate a variable. Just like over here, I isolated the y because it was almost by itself. Okay, so we kind of see that x is almost by itself here. In order to get it by itself, I would divide everything by 3. But you'll notice that 8 divided by 3 is a fraction. So that's not really fun for me at least. Maybe you're thinking the same thing. I don't want to deal with fractions. And that's why we have options for what methods we can take. And in this particular problem, I'm actually going to use a method called elimination. Okay, in order to do elimination, uh, essentially you want to add the equations and hope a variable just eliminates when you add them together. For example, if I had one equation with 2x and another equation with negative 2x, well, that would add to 0x's, which would essentially eliminate it. And that's kind of the goal is to add equations and hope that happens. Now, it's easiest to do this if you have your variables lined up in an equation. Um, so you have x's, y's equals to a number. And you'll notice this particular problem does not. So I'm going to rearrange it first just to get it to look like this first equation. You don't always have to do this, but sometimes it is helpful to visualize. So I am going to do it. Just rewriting that first one. Um, in order to get the second one to look like that, I need to move the y's over, just like you have x's and y's on this side. In order to do that, you need to subtract 8y, because 8y minus 8y is 0. Whatever you do to one side, you're going to do the other side. So that equation just translates to 3x minus 8y equals negative 3 is left there. Okay, so now we could add these two equations. It just makes it easier to combine like terms, because you've got x's, y's, numbers in the same structure. Again, you won't always have to do that, but it's something to worth, worth noting. And if I add these two equations together as is, 5x plus 3x would give me 8x's. Okay, 9y's minus 8y's would give me 1y. So as I add them together that way, nothing will eliminate, unfortunately. Okay, which makes me have a little extra step here. And it's nothing we can't handle, but let's talk about why they won't eliminate. Remember in the example I gave you, this is what eliminated. 2x minus 2x is 0. And that doesn't happen here because uh, the coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables, are all different numbers. These eliminated because they're the exact same number. So in order to get elimination to work, the coefficients have to be exactly the same. And you might be wondering, how do I make that happen? Because you can't just do math magic and change the equation to make these both 5x's. But what you can do is you can scale the equation by a common factor. And what that means is... As long as you do something to every single part of the equation, multiplying every single part of the equation, you keep it balanced 
Essentially, what you're doing is scaling the equation. So for example, if I took this equation and multiplied everything by 2, it would be the exact same equation, but 2 times larger. Okay, you would keep it equivalent. So we want to find something that we can multiply either one or both of the equations by to give the numbers, to make the numbers in front exactly the same. Okay, so sometimes this is easy um, to see and sometimes it's difficult. What I recommend doing if you can't see what to multiply by is to multiply them by each other. So let's say I want to eliminate the x's. What number does 5 and 3 both go into? Well, if you multiply this one by 3 and this one by 5, okay, then this would be 15 and this would also be 15. Okay, but um, 2x and negative 2x were also opposite signs, so they canceled out. So we want these to be opposite signs as well. So I just want to make one of them negative. It doesn't matter which one. And then you just scale the equation by this factor. It'll still be an equivalent equation, um, but something that can eliminate. So we'll call this guy equation 1 and this guy equation 2, and I'll rewrite them down here. Okay, so negative 3 times 5x gives me negative 15x in equation 1. In equation 2, you've got 5 times 3x, which would give me positive 15x, which when we add them together will eliminate. And I keep going. Um, I'm going to pause the video just to kind of multiply this negative 3 and 5 to both terms. See if you can try this on your own and tell me what the new equations would be, and I'll come back in a second. Cool. If you distributed both of those numbers correctly, this is the new equation 1, this is the new equation 2, and now when we add the equations together, something should eliminate because negative 15 and positive 15x gives me 0x's. Okay, keep adding. This will give me negative 67y. And, ooh, this will also give me 0. So then when you go to isolate y, you divide both sides by negative 67. That's actually kind of nice. You get y equals, well, 0 divided into any parts is always going to be 0. A nice small number for us. Okay, but then we solved for y, and just like substitution, you need to also solve for x. So we're going to take this guy and plug it in for a y in either equation. I'm going to use this one because it looks a little bit easier. Um, either one's fine, though. Just use the second equation. So instead of 8 times y, we know y is now 0, and we can solve. So 8 times 0 is 0 minus 3. Uh, we'll give you 3x equals negative 3. Divide both sides by 3. x is going to be negative 1. Okay, so the point of intersection of these two lines then would be negative 1 comma 0. Again, we always write points as x first, then y. And I can prove that by just graphing this real quick. So here in Desmos, we had the two equations we started with. I just graphed them. And you can see the point they have in common then is right here, which is in fact negative 1, 0. So that's how you solve a system by substitution and elimination. Both methods are good. You want to know both because sometimes one's easier than the other. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a good rest of your day.